This video is brought to you by my generous backers over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel and get cool perks like access to the Discord, seeing the videos a week before anyone else, or an entire video dedication, then feel free to check out my Patreon. The link's in the description below. This video is dedicated to Mike82. Mike, thank you for your continued support. A potentially brief return to 1v1. We'll see if I manage to keep the schedule up. Queen Marquesa versus Marathon the Boundless. Absolutely no idea which tribe our opponent's gone for. Haven't played 1v1 in the longest time. All right, it is Sliver Tribal by the looks of it. So let's see here. We can just go for a tapped red source, I think. And following things up with another Sliver. So it's a buff to toughness, and they all have vigilance now. And we'll just take hit for one. I wonder if it's worth us trying to, I was going to say, trying to get into double white in order to get off a Wrath of God. I think that might be a good idea instead of wasting the Diabolic Edict. So we'll get out another tap land with Marsh Flats. Then a Clot Sliver, which is regenerate this permanent for two generic mana. And then following things up with a hit for three. And we'll have to make sure to crack this fetch. And another land for us, so... Yeah, there's really no point playing the Ophiomancer, is there? We just go for a tap land again and hope that our opponent doesn't scoop to the board wipe that's coming next turn. Missing a land drop in the five colour deck is not good, although it looks as though it might be an Orzhov build. Uh, this one is... All your slivers have first strike. Alright, well, we get into Elspeth. Uh, I'll just get down the swamp and we'll go for this Wrath of God. Because I've got a feeling our opponent is going to scoop to this. Yep, there we go. Queen Marquesa versus Daxos the Returned. Have to see if I manage to keep up with the schedule. Going to keep that and hope that we can get into Monastery Mentor quite quickly. Temple of Silence from our opponent, we get into another land, so I think it's just Lightning Greaves into Monastery Mentor. Now a Thought Seize from our opponent. Do we want to Thought Seize instead of the Lightning Greaves? Uh, yeah, I think we can do that. Alright, there's some lands, a Mana Vault, a Johnny Steadfast, I think it is the Sorin that we'll go for there, because they can get out tokens to go wide on us. And we don't want that when we're playing around the monarchy. Just getting down their commander now. And they didn't have any enchantments in hand. So I don't know if I'm all that worried about playing out anything other than the Monastery Mentor, to be honest. We can go Monastery Mentor and then Dark Seal Mutation next turn. The Mana Vault coming down now and probably going into their Planeswalker. Yep, a Johnny Steadfast. And then they get out. Toktali Honor Guard. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Yeah, I don't really care about that. And they get some keywords on Daxos as well as a plus one, plus one buff. We get into our fourth land, so we'll definitely go in for that. And I think it's just Dark Steel Mutation. And then we can go D Spark onto a Jani if we're really worried about that. Let's go Dark Steel Mutation onto Daxos to try and keep them off of their. Um, experience counters. Then we'll go for the Greaves as well to protect our uh, Monastery Mentor. Thinking back now, we could have waited on the Dark Steel Mutation and swung in at Ajani. I think they might have blocked with this and it just gets rid of another permanent. As it is now, they can just block with the Indestructible, so we'll hold back. Now, Auromancy coming down gives all of their Enchantment Shroud, but they don't have any. And then another scoop. That is the second early scoop in a row, so hopefully you're not seeing these and I actually managed to get a good game, but if you are seeing these, then just assume that I didn't. Okay, a third attempt at getting a game with Queen Marquesa against Muldrotha the Gravetide this time. And I'm hoping that you're not going to see the first two games because they were just early scoops. Tap land from our opponent, we get into Demonic Tutor. Let's see about going for the Scrub land here into Duress. 
Now then, the Search for Azkanter, Seal of Primordium. They've got an island for the Search for Azkanter, which gets them closer to a land, so we'll get rid of that. I don't really want them to have Ristic Study either. But I'm hoping that they'll be further away from a land if we get rid of this. Alright, going for Reassembling Skeleton. And we've got a Path to Exile, so... What do we want to go for here? We could just go straight into Sol Ring in an attempt to... Actually, that wouldn't help us get down our commander next turn, would it? It would have to be Mana Crypt. And that just accelerates us ahead, because we do have quite a heavy hand. So I think we need to try and draw as many cards as quickly as possible, as well as accelerate our mana. So probably getting down our commander next turn. And they didn't manage to hit that other land, which is exactly why I went for the search. Uh, so we go Blood Crypt in Shocked. Go for the Mana Crypt, and we'll get down our Queen Marquesa. Not going to swing in, because our opponent will be able to take the Monarchy straight back off us. And getting too anguished on making, this is pretty much removal dot deck. As we're seeing here with all the draws. Fourth time to charm, hopefully. This time up against Brago, King Eternal. With a one lander. Do we keep a one lander just for the sake of trying to get an actual game going? Try and handicap ourselves. I don't think I'm that desperate yet. Alright, that's okay. So we'll keep that. Get rid of the virtue. Then a field of ruin from our opponent. So let's go for... Uh, we can go for Blood Crypt in Tapped. And then a white mana gets us into Castigate next turn. Another colourless land from our opponent, so they're not likely to be anywhere close to their commander. Might be that they're even further away after this Castigate. Okay, we've got some good stuff there. This Generous Gift, Never Maker, Deceiver Exarch is... Is that a potential combo piece? Well, we're getting rid of the sword here anyway. Alright, deciding to go for the Field of Ruin to get themselves into some coloured mana. Uh, what do we want there? Then we want... We could take double white from Marsh Flats. Yeah, let's just go for a Swamp here. And then it's another Plains for us, so... We go in for a Tap Land from the Marsh Flats because there's nothing else to do. We could be really mean and go for Vindicate onto the island, but our opponent's just going to scoop if we do that, which would actually be a fair enough scoop. And this video is apparently going to be a quest to get a real game going. Still nothing for our opponent to do apparently, so we will crack this and go in for the, what is it called, Sacred Foundry, I think. And now our opponent's going for something in response. Okay, Deceiver Exarch. Tap a target permanent, untap a permanent. Not sure what the aim with that is. Tapping down our planes, which won't do anything. And then it's another land for us. Let's get down the Mutavolt so that we can knock summoning sickness off of it. And we'll get down our commander. Again, not going to swing in because I don't want my opponent to draw into that white mana they need. Or I do, but I don't want to help them to do it. <laughs> another colourless land, that is four. Our opponent might be running too many. Alright, and the attempt at getting a game continues, so hopefully you're all getting some amusement out of this. I think I've kind of decided that I'm going to try and make a jokey video out of this one. There we go, there is one that says they want no CDH, but they want an optimised deck. I think ours is around power level 8, so we'll try our luck with this one. This time it's Karametra, God of Harvests. Uh, we have access to red there. We can get out our Liliana or our Ophiomancer. Let's keep. Nope, apparently not. They want an optimised game that is not CDH, but not against us or not against Queen Marquesa. What is it now, the sixth time? I don't even know. Uh, we are on the play, so... <laughs> If we have an extra land, that's actually pretty good, but... Uh, eh, for the sake of it, let's just keep it. We'll give our opponent a handicap. Or we'll give ourselves a handicap and give our opponent half a chance of 
getting into something against us. Because our opponents are having a really tough time against Queen Marquesa today, apparently. Alright, that's a great draw. Managed to get into a mountain, ready for Bitter Blossom. And that sets us up for Skull Clamp next turn. So there was a bit of luck involved there, as there is in most Magic the Gathering games, but... We did keep an opening hand with Skull Clamp and Bitter Blossom, so... We ought to be drawing a lot of cards. Another tap land for our opponent. I don't know if this is the same opponent that was playing Brago last time, but at least if it is the same player, they've gotten into some uh, coloured mana this time. Alright, a path and a fairy rogue for us. We go Skull Clamp and see if they want to Swords the fairy in response to the equip. They do not. So we'll draw a couple of cards, try and get ourselves into a land for the turn. We do not manage to get into a land for the turn, so we'll just have to pass over. At the very least, we cleared those two cards off the top, which is really good. A third piece of white mana from our opponent, and they've got Miss Meadow Witch down, which... It is a two-mana creature, but you don't want to see it this early in the game, really. Anguished on making for us, so we just go for another Skull Clamp. And just carry on trying to get into some lands. Alright, getting into a Plains. So we'll play that and we'll go for Transgress the Mind on our opponent. CMC 3 or greater. Ooh, let's see here. That's some stuff our opponent's got. Uh, Reflector Mage. Mm, don't particularly mind Reflector Mage, really. Grand Arbiter Augustine is going to be a pain, though. Yeah, we'll let our opponent keep the Thran Dynamo and get rid of that. Then out of all that, we'll get rid of Elspeth. And our opponent still scoops it up, excellent. So I think we just need to go on a banning tirade again and uh, make sure that we don't come up against these players if they're just going to scoop every chance they get. What are we on now? Seven? Seven attempts, I think it is. Grizzlebrand isn't going to scoop early, surely. So let's certainly keep that. We've got three colours. And we've got some card draw as well. We'll just go straight in for a black and red source. Uh, Badlands, actually. I was going to go for a tap land, and then I saw that Duress. So let's go Badlands. And Duress, try and get rid of something really good from our opponent. Some ramp or something. Okay, that is a Mana Vault for sure. Swamp for our opponent, we get into Isolated Chapel, let's drop the planes first and we'll go for Knight's Whisper. Keep our hand full. And it's a young Pyromancer for us, not sure how useful that's going to be this game, but we could get it down next turn. Just for the sake of getting attackers into play, Council's Judgment is nice. Let's go young Pyromancer and we'll hold up the... Path to Exile, highly doubt we're going to be using that. But we'll hold it up anyway. Cabal Ritual takes them up to 4 mana. They're not going to Damnation here, surely. Nope, it is a Mastermind's Inquisition search for a card. Put it into your hands, so... I wonder if this is just a bunch of tutors in this deck. Alright, it's Mana Crypt they've gone for apparently, so I think that might deserve a Council's Judgment. We'll try and encourage them to board wipe. Oh, Bitter Blossom as well. That's a shame that we're not playing that this turn. But yeah, we have to go in for the um, the Council's Judgment here because if they drop a land, they can go in for Bolas's Citadel. And then we'll swing in at them for two, hold up the path, and hope that they don't get into anything really good. We just need to deal with their mana in a Grizzle Brand deck. Holding on to that Damnation for a little while longer seemingly, let's get down the Muter Vault to knock the Summoning Sickness off, as usual. Then it's Bitter Blossom, holding up Hero's Downfall, and we'll swing in with Young Pyromancer. Managing to make a land every turn at least, whenever an opponent loses life you gain that much, yep, don't care about that until Grizzlebrand comes down. So we're gaining our opponent a life every turn with the Bitter Blossom. Arena Rector. I was going to get down Queen Marquesa this turn and swing in with Muta Vault, but if they want a board wipe, they're going to have to wrap up an Arena Rector in that as well, so yeah, let's go for that. 
Looks as though they might be missing a land this time, which is good. They get rid of our Arena Rector with the Damnation. So, do we want Elspeth? Or do we want a Nixilis for card draw? I think we'll go Elspeth. Because that can get down a lot of tokens into play, but it can also board wipe on Grizzlebrand. Uh, let's go for the plus immediately. We can actually go and get score clamp with that demonic tutor now. But we'll introduce Queen Marquesa into the fray. Because that's free card draw as long as we can keep hold of the monarchy. Another hit for five onto our opponent. We draw into the Grave Titan. Just a case of hoping that our opponent doesn't manage to get down Bolas's Citadel into a bunch of stuff. They can afford it now. Alright, they went for Elder Spell, so they probably had that in the hand when they went for the board wipe, hence the reason that they didn't mind wiping with a Rector in play. A Sol Ring, even more mana for us. Let's hold on to Grave Titan for now. We'll go in for the Sol Ring, and then activate Mutavolt, and we're probably going in for Skull Clamp with Demonic Tutor after this, but we'll attack first. Alright, that is Drag to the Underworld, going on to, uh, yeah, our Queen Marquesa. Don't really mind her leaving play now that she's brought in the monarchy with her. Uh, yeah, so she can go into the command zone again. Then we're going for the Demonic Tutor, like I said. Go for the Clamp, play the Clamp. And then we'll get rid of some soldiers here. Lightning Helix, oh, Intangible Virtues, nice. That is two, four, six, and eight. 9, 10. Uh, yeah, if we can get down Queen Marquesa next turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. If we get into a land, we can win next turn. Intangible Virtue and our Commander. So I'm not going to bother clamping again. We'll just hold up the path. Oh no, we'd have to activate Mutavolt, wouldn't we? Oh well. Still going to get down the Virtue. Polis' is Citadel coming down now. And it might be that they just have a bunch of removal on top. We actually don't have a sack outlet for our skull clamp. If our opponent... If we want to go for skull clamp when there's an anthem out in play, then... Yeah, I think I'd just rather pile on the damage at this point, so let's go for the intangible virtue still. Animate the Muta Vault. And then we'll swing in with everything. Alright, and then we've got Lightning Helix, so we can take our opponent out here. Get it done as soon as possible, so... Not particularly eventful, but at least it was a full game. Good for our opponent for sticking this one out. What did it take? About... Seven games to get a full game in. And actually reduce our opponent's life total down to zero. So... My first return to 1v1 in a long time, and it wasn't a particularly pleasant experience, to be honest, so I don't know if I'm going to keep this up, like I said. Feels like a huge waste of time sometimes when you're trying to get games going. If I was in the same time zone as most of my patrons, then it would be a lot easier, but alas, I live in the UK, as you all know. Anyway, hopefully you all got a laugh out of this, me trying to get a game going for so long. Um, yeah, I will attempt another 1v1 round with another commander and hopefully we'll have better luck next time. Leave it a thumbs up if you did like it and subscribe to keep up to date. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.